Alright. What a crazy day. Okay, that's fine. Hello, friends. Thanks for joining. We are on page 76. I repeat, 76. Remember, Chase decided to go with them to the um, um, old people home. I can't think of what it's like a better term for that right now. <laughs> Retirement community home place, you know, assisted living. Even though he does, he's done with the community service, he decided to go anyways. I remember Bear and Aaron really aren't acting all that um, well, you know. They're being rude to the people there, and they're, like, stealing the food, and you know, Chase, once again, is like, oh, my God, was this really what I was like? And remember, Chase is kind of interested in talking to them. And Bear and Aaron are like, oh, they're dumb, you know. So we are at the top of page 76, okay? I'll have to admit, it's probably good advice. All right, I say, let's just finish. We work our way down the hall to the last room on the floor. Almost done. Aaron groans, just cloud 10, and we get out of here. Cloud 10, I echo. You're going to love this one, Bear assures me. You know cloud nine? Well, this old bag's at least one cloud up from that. Half the time, she's convinced this is a fancy hotel and we're room service. I see their point, but I kind of feel bad for Mrs. Swanson, who bustles around her living room in a frilly pink dressing gown dotted with sequined flowers. She's... Yeah, let's problem solve, okay? Sitting doing nothing doesn't help, friends. Let's figure it out. Um, she's obviously losing touch with reality, and there's nothing hilarious about that. At first, she thinks we've come to visit and ask us to move furniture into what she calls a conversation grouping. Aaron and Bear ignore her, but what harm will it really do? What harm will it do, really? So I shuffle a few chairs, no big deal. My friends are mugging at me behind her back the whole time, trying to make me laugh. They might be the smart ones. Time out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're being flexible today, okay? Flexibility is key every day. Aaron and Bear ignore her. Oh, blah, 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 blah. They might be the smart ones. By the time I finish sweaty and breathing hard, Mrs. Swanson is looking at me like she's too polite to ask who I am and why I'm rearranging her apartment. Aaron and Bear are snickering out loud now. We drop off our cookies and juice and head for the door, but she comes bustling after us, waving her pocketbook. She digs around, comes up with a $20 bill, and offers it to me. Don't leave without your tip, she says. I take a step back. Oh, no, I can't accept. Before I can manage another word, Bear's meaty hands snatch the money away. Enjoy your stay, he tells Mrs. Swanson with a big phony smile, and he's out the door like a shot. Aaron's shot. Aaron's hot on his heels. Okay, so this old lady thinks that she's in a hotel, because sometimes when you're older, your mind starts to go. Um, she thinks she's in a hotel and stuff, and, like, you tip, you know, the room service and stuff. So she tipped them. Obviously, should they be accepting her money? No, that's, like, stealing. First off, Aaron and Bear didn't even do anything. And second of all, like... They're not getting paid if they're on community service and, you know, she's just confused. So them taking her money is pretty much stealing from someone who doesn't really understand what she's doing. It'd be like a little kid giving you money when they don't understand what, you know, the money is. So that's not cool. I catch up in the hall. You can't take that money. That's like stealing. No, it's not. Bear replies. She gave it to me. Actually, she gave it to you, but you were just too dumb to take it. Yeah, but I fumble for the right words. You know as well as I do. That lady's not all there. That's discrimination, he says righteously. I'm not biased against dizzy old bats who haven't got a clue what the deal is. They gave me money just like everybody else. You don't know her. She would have gotten really upset if we hadn't taken it. She wants to believe what she wants to believe. We're not here for kicks, you know, I insist. We got sent here by a judge. If we got caught accepting money from the residents, we could be in a lot more community service. Bear rounds me in genuine amazement. You don't even have to be here, man. You made us bring you. I'm stubborn. Give the money back. Aaron tries to be reasonable. The museum pieces in this dump, they've forgotten their own saggy butts if they weren't attached. By the time the door closed behind us, I guarantee Cloud 10 forgot we were even there. If we go to her and try to straighten this out, it'll be like showing her how crazy she is. You want to be responsible for that? 
I know he's snowy me, but he's also kind of right. I doubt we could explain to Miss Swanson that she just tipped the community service guys. But even if we would, she'd be embarrassed and upset and probably more confused than before. We should give the money to charity, I mumbled. Done, Barry agrees. It's going to my favorite charity, the Take Bear to Lunch Fund. Who's up for pizza? We all laugh. But I'm laughing a lot less than those two. The whole thing leaves a sour taste in my mouth, and pizza is the last thing I'm thinking about. We stop in to see Nurse Duncan so Aaron and Bear can get their timesheets signed. I'm not technically on community service anymore, so there's no timesheet for me. Then we're heading for the pizza place like nothing ever happened. I keep looking at Bear, expecting to see the 20 growing, glowing orange and burning through the pocket of his jeans. I can't explain it. Okay, grab a pair, sir, because this started a long time ago. There's like a ton. And didn't I just give you a pair last week, sir? Yes, yes, I did. So you better find those. In fact, they said Nolan H. I can't explain it, but the more they goof around, tripping and shoving each other, the less appetite I have for lunch. You okay, Ambrose? Aaron tosses me, tosses at me in concern. You don't look so hot. Ah, uh, I'll catch up with you guys later. I pound back in the direction of Portland Street. I hang a left and sprint up to the assisted living residence, then dash in the sliding door straight up to room 100. I take a fistful of crumpled bills from my pocket and fish out a 20. Aaron's right. I'd never be able to explain to Miss Swanson why I'm giving her money for what she could only see as no reason. No, my plan is simpler than that. I'll slip it right under her door. When she notices it, she'll just assume she dropped it. So I squat down and pass the bill through the gap between the door and the carpet. It occurs to me that if somebody sees me, it'll look like I'm the one doing the sleazy, doing something sleazy, not the one making it right. Luck is with me, though. I'm able to return the 20 unobserved. No, not return, I remind myself. I'm out 20 bucks in this deal. I feel a little resentful when I picture Aaron and Bear feasting on pizza that I'm essentially paying for, but it's a small price tag for being able to sleep at night. As I make my way out again, I pause in front of 221, the Medal of Honor guy. I squint at the small plaque on the wall, Mr. Julius Soloway. The door is open a crack. I catch a glimpse of Mr. Soloway struggling across the room on his walker. Suddenly, a bald eye is glaring at me through the opening. You're back, Mr. Solway's rapid voice growls from inside. What do you want now? My instinct is to flee, but curiosity gets the better of me. Which war was it? I asked the old man. You know, where you won the medal. The Trojan War, he barks. Remember Achilles? I was the one who got him right in the heel. That's a joke, just for the record. The Trojan War was like, like Bible times. So definitely uh, not, that was a joke. It stings, but I say, I didn't mean to disturb you and start away. Korea, he calls after me, retreating back. 1952. I turn. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Solway. You must have done something really heroic. Everyone did, he replies gruffly. A lot of brave men are still buried there. They're heroes, and I'm the one they picked to hang a bobble, babble, bubble, babble on, like a medal. I can't help asking, what did you do? Turn the medal, I mean. I can still only see one eye, but it's impossible to miss the flash of impatience. I stood on my head and spit nickels. Listen, smart guy, when you get to be my age, you don't always remember the details of every single event in your life. But I don't expect a young punk like you to understand that. He closes the door. Well, people are supposed to have wisdom, but Mr. Solway is definitely wrong about me. I've already forgotten more than he'll ever know. So obviously the elderly residents here don't know that he has amnesia and stuff. So he's like, you know, I can't remember everything. Why are you asking any questions? And Chase is like, yeah, I don't remember anything either. So now we got a new person. We haven't ever heard from this person before. Chapter 10, Kimberly Tooley, new person in the house. I love pep rallies. I love the noise and the cheering. I love being with the whole school packed into the bleachers in the gym, showing our spirit, raising the roof, stomping and screaming our heads off. Getting out of class doesn't hurt either. I'm a huge football fan. It's definitely my favorite sport. All those downs are kind of confusing, though. First down, second down, touchdown, down by contact, elite goal man downfield. Hard to figure out, but when the Hawassasi Hurricanes thunder onto the field with their shoulder pads, it's all good. Guys look amazing in shoulder pads. This season might not be as awesome as usual because Chase Ambrose isn't on the team. Chase is our star. Out of all the players, 
who look good in shoulder plaid pads. He looks the best. He hurt himself falling off a roof this summer, and word around school is he has amnesia. He can't remember everything, including the fact that I've had a crush on him since sixth grade. But he doesn't know I'm alive. So he isn't one of the players in full uniform showing off on the gym floor while we stomp and cheer. Oh, he's down there, all right, recording what's going on with a video camera. I don't really get that part. It's one thing for Chase to be off the team. It's quite another for him to join video club. Those kids are basically nerds. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are catching catch my drift here, but Kimberly's just like a little bit boy crazy. And she's like, oh my God, pep rallies are the best. And clearly she loves Chase and um, Chase doesn't know she's alive. Especially doesn't know she's alive. He's alive. She's alive on account of, um, well, he has amnesia, you know, so he really doesn't know who she is. The point of the rally is to get everyone all riled up to the annual, to the, uh, riled up to annihilate, sorry, annihilate Jefferson on Saturday. We've got dummies dressed in Jefferson jerseys and our guys are kicking and stuffing out of them, are kicking the stuffing out of them, sorry. And our mascot is beating up Jefferson's mascot, actually just a Hawassa Sea Kid in a Jaguar suit. Chase is filming them close up, holding his camera right in there to capture every fake punch. I miss the show. I miss the shoulder pads, but he still looks good. And then the rally's over. We file back off the bleachers and start for our lockers to get our stuff to go home. The team heads out to practice, chattering, chattering, no, sorry, clattering, clattering down the hallway that leads to the field house. There's a big traffic jam there. Players go in one way and the rest of us go in the other. A few elbows fly. Brendan Espinazo somehow gets bumped into the path of the players. That's typical Brendan, who could cross an empty parking lot and slip on one banana peel in the middle. The guys know Brendan and make a game of bouncing him around like a soccer go ball. Pretty soon the team is laughing. The kids are laughing and Brendan is flying back and forth, holding onto his camera for deal life. It's pretty funny. The chant goes up while Brendan flails. It's like the whole football team is calling out, pass it, pass it, pass it. There's a blur of motion and suddenly... Joey Pentarinos is slammed up against the wall by two fistfuls of his football jersey. It's Chase. His handsome face is normally chiller than chill, but right now he's boiling mad. Let the kid go, Chase demands. Brendan stumbles free, collapsing to the opposite wall. The other hurricanes haul Chase off Joey, and there's a lot of shoving going on. Shoving comes naturally to football players. It's even part of the game. Every play starts off with two lines of guys shoving each other. Two hurricanes... Hold Chase, struggling by the arms. Chase looks almost small, dwarfed by the players in the pads and cleats. Aaron and Bear muscle into the center of attention, putting themselves between Joey and Chase. Dial it down, Aaron orders. We're all teammates here. What did that guy ever do to you, huh? Chase spits at Joey, yanking his arm free. Like you've got anything to say about it, Joey shoots back. What's that supposed to mean? Joey indicates Brendan, who's dusting himself off, surrounded by his fellow video clubbers. Yeah, right. Like you never had a little fun with Espinaza. I laugh at that one because no one messed with the dweebs more than Chase, Aaron, and Bear, but Chase looks so mystified that it hits me. He really has amnesia. Is it possible that he doesn't remember? Chase addresses the entire team. We were shooting your pep rally to make you look good. You're welcome. The players stare at him in horror. He has no clue what he said upset them, but I do. He said we. We, the video club. You, the team. Joey hefts his helmet. We used to be tight with this kid, Chase Ambrose. We were more than teammates. We were boys. But lately, I don't know who he is. He leads the Hurricanes in a jog out to the field. Aaron and Bear hang back. I'm expecting them to take Chase's side, since those three are best friends. Chase seems pretty shocked when Bear wheels off with the others. Aaron eyes Chase with a long face. You shouldn't have done that, man. Joey's your friend. He's had your back plenty of times. Chase is still defiant, but a little more subdued than before. So I should just let him beat up a kid half his size for no reason? Aaron stands his ground. If you'd have told him to stop, he would have stopped. You don't have to attack him, he shakes his head. None of us are perfect, not even you. Next time, take a second and think about who your friends are. He disappears after the team. Thanks, Chase, Brennan says in a shaky voice. Shy but graceful, grateful, the video club members express their gratitude. Not too many people ever stand up to the football team. Only Chase can do it because he's one of them. At least he used to be. Shoshana Weber rolls her eyes. Please, big deal. Why would anybody thank him? Is there any one of us he hasn't treated like garbage? Brandon looks at her surprised. Didn't you see what happened there? I saw him being a goon, like he always is. Today he's on the other side, but what about tomorrow? Remember what he did to my brother? She storms off. 
Wow. Joel Weber, thinking about him, puts a lump in my throat. I almost forgot he's Shoshana's brother. A lot of this stuff feels like harmless until it was like, until something like Joel Weber happens. Chase seems to be a little shell-shocked by the whole thing. After all, he took on the football team on behalf of the video club kids. And what's his reward? Getting dissed by one of them. The others try to smooth it over. Sorry, man. She didn't mean it. You were awesome back there. Brendan is last. You didn't have to do that, he says, although it's pretty obvious he's glad someone came to his rescue. They're all gone. The hallway is cleared out by now, so it's just Chase and me. He's still bewildered. I didn't even know she had a brother. Yeah, Joel Weber, quiet kid, plays pianos. He got bullied so bad that his folks sent him away to boarding school. That's the edited version of the truth. What Chase doesn't remember, he's basically started starred in the bullying. I don't think his goal could have been to force Joel to leave town, but he definitely intended to make him miserable. I wonder if he was sorry when he heard that the Webbers were sending their son away. I guess no one will ever know, not even Chase himself. However, he felt about what happened to Joel. He's already forgotten it. Chase chews it over. I was in on that, wasn't I? He says, finally. I was in on a lot of stuff. People look at me funny around here. And maybe it's not just because I'm an idiot who fell off a roof. No one thinks you're an idiot, I put in quickly. Yeah, but it isn't the kind of thing Albert Einstein ever did. He pauses thoughtfully. A good look for him makes him seem older. You can't believe how weird it is to have this whole life and everyone remembers except you. I'm Kimberly, I tell him. But you always call me Kimmy. Not exactly true. But how's he ever going to know? I've always wanted to be called Kimmy, Kimmy, especially by him. We shake hands like two business people meeting for the first time. Well, I'm late for video club, he tells me. See you, Kimmy. I'm speechless, so I just wave at him. This has to be the best day ever. If Chase forgot everything, it means he also doesn't remember that he's totally out of my league. I have to join video club as soon as possible. Okay, so she just has like a major crush on Chase and she's going to join video club so she can obviously be with him more. And, you know, obviously she's just a little awkward schoolgirl who loves Chase. So, funny. Yeah, go then. They just, they just stay in after school, you know, I don't know. All right. Now we are going to hear from Aaron. Ooh, Aaron. Remember, one of Chase's best friends. Let's throw some quotes around that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if we can get through this chapter and then next time. My dad always used the expression, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Well, that isn't always true. It looks like an Ambrose and it talks like an Ambrose, but no way that's Ambrose. How could a person be so different just because he fell, off, fell on his head? Okay. So he's sidelined from football. Nothing you can do about some dumb doctor's orders. And amnesia. That's pretty out there, although Wikipedia says it's real. But even if every single memory is erased from your head, wiped clean like my phone when I dropped it in the toilet, you should still be the same person, right? Chase just isn't. It's not the kid Bear and I grew up with, played sports with, broke the rules with since we were in second grade. You can see it in his eyes. He looks at us like he barely knows us or any of the hurricanes. I guess I understand that. We're like new people he just met for the first time. Even so, shouldn't we be starting to hit it off by now? That's not happening either. He's just not into the, not into the things we're into. Not football, not anything. That hurts. I get that his memory's erased, but is our whole friendship erased too? Being boys with someone isn't just a bunch of stuff you did together in the past. There's to be more than that, but right now, it's like we've got zero in common with the guy. So even though Aaron's like this big old bully, he still is feeling like, sad because he's like also lost a friend right I don't know if any of you have ever like lost a friend obviously not in this situation with amnesia but still you're friends with someone then you're not friends and like so they're struggling even though you know he's still around but Aaron feels like he's lost a friend worse the kid does have stuff in common with worse the kid he's the kids he does have stuff in common with are all losers the video club really the chase I know wailed on those guys more than any of us. And now they're who he wants to hang out with. Who's next, huh? The Care Bears? And for those wusses have totally forgiven him too, except Shoshana for obvious reasons. I wondered if he's figured, figured that out yet. The big question is, is the old Ambrose trapped in there somewhere waiting to realize what a dork he's being and get back to normal? Or is this new nerd loving chase the only chase we're going to get from now on? That's a pretty big deal. And not because we're supposed to be boys, but he is something that belongs to all three of us. Something important. What if he doesn't even know he's got it? Bear isn't a deep thinker. He's all action. Dude, 
this is stupid. Let's ask him. Say, we know you have it. Fork it over. He's got amnesia, I respond. That means he might not even remember where he put it. Bear snorts. You buy that? Trust me. He remembers just fine. That thing's valuable. He's faking all this amnesia stuff so he can keep it for himself. You're talking about our boy, I explain angrily, giving him a shove that would have put one of those video dweebs halfway across town. You're a jerk for even thinking that. He shoves me back. Then you're a jerk because I know you're thinking it too. Okay, so apparently the three of them have something that's really valuable, but Chase has it, and we don't we don't even know what it is. And does Chase remember where it's at? Probably freaking not, because he didn't even remember his own mom. But I'm not thinking it. Honestly, if Chase is just punking all of this with amnesia stuff, that would be better. If tomorrow he says fooled you, I might be ticked off for a day or so, then I'd shake his hand for putting one over on us. Mostly, I'd be glad to have old Chase back. One way or the other, we got a problem, I tell him. If we face him with it and he honestly doesn't remember, then we just confess to a guy who isn't really our friend anymore. Big deal. It is a big deal, I persist, because the new Chase is goody-goody. He stands up for the losers and does community service when he doesn't have to. And if he forgot what we did, I don't want to remind him. A guy like that could turn all three of us in because it's the right thing to do. Unless he's lying, Bear adds grimly. And we'll deal with that, too, if necessary. We'll just have to wait and see. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to squeeze the truth out of someone when they can't let him know that you're trying to get him to say. I'm a plain guy. I like plain talk, but in this case, it's too dangerous. Our best chance to coax it out of him is at the Greybeard Motel. But it's not so easy there either. Bad enough he does community service when he's off the hook. Why does he have to be so gung-ho about it? It's depressing to watch him. He delivers more snacks in 20 minutes than Bear and I could stretch into the whole afternoon. And in the extra time, he reads to the people. He pushes wheelchairs around. He helps the old fogies with their cell phones that don't have a player for don't have a prayer for figuring it out. Is it just me, Bear mutters, or is he deliberately trying to make us look bad? I don't think it's on purpose, I mumble back. He really likes it here. The old fossils like him too. We don't walk three feet down the hall without some Dumbledore, Dumbledore hauling him in to adjust their TV or reaching for something on a high shelf. Bear is insulted. We're taller than Ambrose. We could reach stuff. How come nobody ever asks us? Because we'd say no, I remind him. Or maybe just ignore them. Listen, it's annoying that all these blue hairs love Chase, but it's not a mystery. Even sour-faced Nurse Duncan, who wishes our community service was over even more than we do, has a smile for Ambrose and an even deeper scowl for Bear and me. It doesn't help that Chase has forged the closest friendship with for, forged the closest friendship of all with the one resident he should be staying away from. The crotchety old war horse in room two or 121. What do you, you know it? The one graybeard who hates everybody and who all the graybeards hate right back has decided to love Chase Ambrose. Go figure. It's those stupid Korean war stories that brought the two of them together. Chase can't get enough of them. And the geezer is overjoyed to have someone willing to listen who doesn't have to change his hearing aid battery every five times, hearing aid battery five times in, a, in the course of it. How come you guys have so much to say to each other, Bear demands. Ambrose shrugs. He's interesting. It's not every day you meet someone who's been awarded the country's highest medal. Why does he always have to bring that up? It makes me nervous, and it makes Bear practically crazy. Wikipedia says Korean War only lasted three years, I grumble. He's already told you every minute of it. What more is there to say? Amber laughs. He's nice. He's not nice. Ask Emmy in the building. He calls noise complaints on squeaky wheelchairs. He yells out spoilers on movie night. The nurse hate him even more than we do. If this was a reality show, they get to vote somebody out of the Greybeard Motel, he'd be on the street. But Chase gets called away to real Mrs. Burland to her weekly canasta game. As if one of the orderlies couldn't do it. Maybe he just likes war stories, I offer Bear. He isn't buying it. He never liked war stories before. And that's the whole problem. We know the could, but we don't. What makes it almost impossible to figure out what's going inside, going on inside his head. Or how worried we should be. Alright, we're going to stop there. We have to be on the hunt to figure out what the heck they took and you know all this stuff so we will start tomorrow because we have reading rti every day now that we're back on green i'm so pumped see you guys later